one of the key things with that is going to be um, making more like tiny adjustments. Sometimes it's just one little word, right, that will induce anxiety or one particular way of focusing and, you know, things of that nature. The first big thing is that word palpitation, okay? That's one thing to just eject from your vocabulary because the problem with that, remember that every single word has a particular meaning that we give it. So if you have a situation where someone makes a joke about you and on the one hand you say, oh, I'm embarrassed, and then on the other hand you say, oh, I'm humiliated, right, that using the word humiliated is going to cause a very different emotional situation, right? So what's really just happening is your heart's beating a little bit faster. That doesn't mean a palpitation. A palpitation indicates that there's something medically wrong, which we've already confirmed that's not the case with your heart, right? So get rid of that word. It's kind of like when um, people use the word uh, symptom. So it's a very common one when I see with people who are dealing with health-related anxiety, and I'll always have them, instead of saying the word symptom, I'll say, start calling it a sensation. And when they do that, then um, they feel very different. They feel a lot better. We're kind of zooming in a little bit more specifically. My guess would be on the days that you are doing really, really well, those would be situations when you're there, you're at the store, and you're not contemplating either A, how much time you have left to be there, or B, getting out and leaving, like exiting. So it would be instead that your focus is more so on just what you can appreciate in the present moment, like just enjoying the moment, I suppose, uh, or the task at hand of just like, okay, well, what's next on the list, right? Like just kind of slowly move. So I want you to notice that, okay, because you, that's going to be the next little thing for you to practice. It's a tricky thing because you, like, think of it this way. You came into the program with a certain set of focuses and a certain set of things that you were saying with your language and a certain way of using your physiology that really freaked you out. And now what you've done is you've changed those to be like, nope, I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna get it done, and I'm just gonna do it, okay? And that focus is a better focus, right? That does create less anxiety. And with you using that language of like, no, I'm going to do it, I'm gonna get it done, we're here. That language that you're using ends up causing you to function, like it ends up getting you to get the thing done, which is great, but it's still got a little bit of like a stressful kind of component to it, right? It's still causing you to feel a little apprehensive. Okay, so if you want to write some of these things down, feel free, but what I, because you're going to need to commit this to memory, because the, the thing to be practicing as you go forward now is it's a little subtly different. You want to be focusing on either one of two things. Number one would be the future you desire. You've heard me say this before, but remember it's not just like the future you desire needs to evolve from, okay, I'm going to go to the store and I'm going to survive the store. All right? Like it needs to be instead like, no, we're going to go have fun at the store. We're gonna have a nice time. We're gonna enjoy ourselves. We're gonna go laugh, you know, like, you see where I'm going with that? It needs to be something actually like positive, right? Visualizing or imagining it going how you want it to go in a more like positive, something with like an actual energy to it, okay? That actually makes you feel good. That would be number one. Number two would be you can focus when you're there on just simply what you appreciate in the present. So what you adore about your daughter or what you, the fact that you just enjoy that you're having a moment with your family or finding new things at the store that you've never found before or coming up with a new meal that you could make that you've never done before or everybody gets to pick one little treat or having just a funny little moment, right? But just bringing your attention to, yeah, what do I appreciate about the present? So I'm noticing that there's one particular phrase that you're using more than any other phrase. It's, I'm fine. You remember the triad, right? So this is kind of what I was saying. So before, you might have said something really bad, like, well, what if this, what if this, what if this, or, you know, something really bad. Now you're saying, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And that I'm fine has helped you tremendously. It's gotten you to the current level that you're at right now. What might be better would be to change that word 
right? To be, no, I'm good. Or even better, like, no, I'm great. Say that one inside your mind real quick. Just like, no, I'm great. Creates more confidence, more assurance. Okay, so that's exactly what I'm, what I'm saying, right? What, you, what has been happening is you're visualizing things going, quote, fine. And you're telling yourself, I'm, quote, fine. Which essentially is like, just slightly above, I will survive. That's great, because that change of pattern has gotten you to where you're at right now. But to get you to that next level, we now need to crank up the positivity. So that you can actually enjoy yourself, right? And have a... So in, now what I want you to do is imagine things where you're feeling happy, you're enjoying it, and then talk to yourself where you're saying, no, I'm great, I'm doing good. Because it may seem disingenuous slightly at first, but remember that repetition creates belief. So, right, so any, any repetition of any language becomes what it is. That's exactly what has happened these past couple of months. You used to freak out and feel like it was all going to go badly, started telling yourself it's going to be fine, and now you feel fine. You just tell yourself you feel great, you're going to feel great. The thing I want you to kind of just be paying attention to now is how each little choice that you make affects how you feel, right? Each choice and what you choose to focus on, what you tell yourself, because you can start to experiment a little bit with adjusting different words, different things uh, that will make you feel a little bit different, make you feel better. The main adjustments I want you to make right now is keep doing what you're doing, but just change, make those little changes on how you talk to yourself and then what you're focusing on, kind of make it more directly, overtly positive. And then what I would also encourage you to do is it, it would be wise for you to tell her of like, hey, look, I appreciate you trying to accommodate me. If I tell you, let's do X, let's just go and do do x like don't question me again on it because the the questioning of like are you sure it does is not exactly helpful it's best for us to just like make a decision and then move forward um, with it right so you can just give him some praise for the fact that he is trying his best he's trying to do what is actually helpful like and tell him how much you appreciate that and then just say in the future let's just do it this way you're right on the cusp of being able to just go forward on your own from here. So I think we might just have one or two extra like small little adjustments. Um, and then there will be um, a couple little new things from the new version of the program that I'll have you implement, particularly for like sustainability and such. But you're, uh, you're very close.